So you'll go on the news media or Wikipedia and you'll hear about white supremacy. White supremacy is a term being used more and more. You'll also hear about white privilege, whiteness, and racial hierarchy. There's been over a thousand percent increase in some of these terms in the New York Times or the LA Times in the last seven years. That is a very big increase, but it's way more common in colleges and university than the news, actually. But let's focus on white supremacy, this term. If you were to ask your average person, hey, what's white supremacy? They'd probably tell you something like, oh, uh, a white supremacist is a real bad person. They want to they want to kill everyone who's not white, or uh, they want to enslave people who aren't white, or they want white people to like conquer the earth or something, something crazy like that, right? It would be an extreme position. There'd be very few people who would really qualify as white supremacists. And chances are anyone who does, like anyone who actually advocates for genocide is probably violent themselves. They're probably in prison, (laughs) not good people. But you'll hear on the news, you'll read on Wikipedia or in a college course, they'll say that certain people are white supremacists like Lana Lochtef or Michelle Malkin or Nick Fuentes. They'll say these people are white supremacists. And you'll wonder, wait a second, you know, maybe you've seen some of these people online. Is that person really a white supremacist? Do they want to genocide or enslave people? I mean, after all, Michelle Mulkin, she's not even white. Does she really want all those things? Well, here's the deal. Academia and the news don't use the same definition of white supremacy as most people. The definition of white supremacy in academia comes from, to a large degree, a much bigger movement that includes critical race theory. Maybe you've heard people talking about critical race theory, this, that, and the other thing. Trump signed an executive order saying to remove it from the government. Biden wants to bring it back. So what does this really mean? What is white supremacy in this context of critical race theory? Well, Wikipedia has a definition. Quote, white supremacy is the belief that white people are superior to those of other races and thus should dominate them. Its purpose is the maintenance and defense of a system of wealth, power, and privilege, end quote. Okay, so that actually doesn't sound that much different from our normal everyday definition. The very first difference we see is the word dominate. What does that mean? Now, that you might think, does dominate mean enslave or kill? But that's not actually what they mean by it. And we can tell, we, we can tell that by looking at the second sentence. They say, Its purpose is the maintenance and defense of a system of wealth, power, and privilege. Maybe you've heard of white privilege before. The privilege that you have because you're born white. Your life is a bit easier for being born white. That's the idea. Well, the key part of that sentence I want to focus on is maintenance and defense. They're not saying white supremacists want to build up a new system where whites dominate other races by enslaving them. They're saying the system is maintained and defended, meaning our current system is one of white supremacy. Our current system is one where white people are superior and dominate non-whites. That's what they're saying. So a white supremacist isn't someone who wants things to change where whites start to dominate non-whites. A white supremacist in this definition is someone who likes the status quo, right? If you just like the way things are, or you think you don't, if we don't need radical change, well, that's a sort of a white supremacist viewpoint. Because our current system, if you maintain it or defend it, well, you're a white supremacist. Now, do you remember the Black Lives Matter website? They had a list of demands on there. So Black Lives Matter is a critical race theory-based organization. One of the things they put on their demands is to, quote, disrupt the Western-prescribed nuclear family structure, end quote. So you got to destroy or disrupt the nuclear family structure. The nuclear family is mom and dad living together together with the kids, right? In a house or apartment. It's very, very common in white countries, but in some non-white countries, you have other forms of 
families, you get a little bit more intergenerational, and also you have communal raising of kids, um, more like it they're raised in a village. So if you don't want the nuclear family destroyed and replaced with communal or government raising of children, well, that's well, that's not very good of you because you're defending and maintaining this system, right? <laughs> uh, it would be it would mean you're a white a white supremacist. Now, have you heard of the Smithsonian, the Smithsonian Institution? It's huge. It's well respected. It used to go by the name United States National Museum. It has over a billion dollars in average annual budget. Most of that comes from the federal government. Well. In the Smithsonian, there is the National Museum of African American History and Culture. So they're part of the Smithsonian. They've told us about whiteness. Here's another term for you. Whiteness is the essence of white culture and white people. So these are the things, these are the social norms and whatever that white supremacists want that will maintain the system of power and privilege and that stuff, right? So obviously, you need to fight against these things too, otherwise you'll be a white supremacist. Someone who likes whiteness is endorsing the domination of non-whites by white people, right? So let's look at what they tell us whiteness is. They bring up rugged individualism. For example, self-reliance. In the United States and Europe, there is often a focus on self-reliance, being able to do things for yourself, in some areas more than others. For example, in Iowa, self-reliance is a very big concept. If you've ever been to Iowa or if you know people from Iowa, if they could repair something themselves or pay someone to do it, a lot of times they'll really want to do it themselves. They want to know how to do it. Even if their repair job isn't maybe as good as paying someone, the fact that they've done it themselves is a big sense of satisfaction for them. So because the United States and Europe has some of this self-reliance view, uh, that makes us kind of white supremacist, is what they're saying. Uh, it's got this aspect of whiteness, this domination. And because Iowa is really like that, they really like self-reliance, that would mean Iowans are particularly white supremacist in this sense. Now, they go on to tell us other forms of whiteness that you should want to dismantle, disrupt, or destroy. So that way, you know, whites are no longer dominating this system. So uh, they bring up the nuclear family again. There's that. Uh, objective thinking, the scientific method. History that focuses on the ancient accomplishments of previous civilizations like the Greeks and the Romans. Also valuing hard work, Christianity, respecting authority, rigid time schedules, European aesthetics, celebrating the founding fathers in our holidays, Christian holidays, and if you like to try and remain neutral, unemotional, and polite in conversations, that's also this whiteness that we need to dismantle. Otherwise, you would be on the side of white supremacists. So, yeah, that's a, it's quite a list. Turns out a lot of things they call whiteness. And if you support or defend it, right, that would be you engaging in the, in the defense and the maintenance of this system of domination, right? A white supremacist. Now, you might be thinking, after hearing me read from this paper they've made, is this real? Is this really what they're saying? This is so crazy. It's so crazy that you might not even believe me. I mean, I must be making it up. This is insane. You can definitely click on the links. You can look to see what they actually said. <laughs> but let's look at the campuses now. A number of colleges and universities have been using a white supremacy pyramid to teach about white supremacy. This one I have here is from Reed College in Portland, Oregon. It uses a sort of iceberg analogy for white supremacy, right? So you, an iceberg has a little piece that pokes up on top that everyone sees, and then it's got the big stuff underneath that no one sees or no, like is harder to understand. So what they say is the part up top is overt white supremacy, like killing people, and covert white supremacy is saying things like, make America great again, celebrating Columbus Day. If you say that you're not privileged for being white, right, 
Uh, or if you were to say you wanted to ignore race, you want to be colorblind. If you say, I want to treat everyone as an individual, well, that would be covert white supremacy. So everything I've given you so far has just been information and my best understanding. I will give you a little bit of my opinion here. I think the reason they do this is moral equivalence. Most people would say, oh, uh, white supremacy is like the worst. It's like the worst thing. So what they're able to do with this is take all sorts of normal stuff, define it as white supremacy, uh, and it's normal stuff they don't like. <laughs> so, for example, let's say you had a guy uh, who lived in Sweden. And with all the mass immigration into Sweden and the violence that's come up and the grenade attacks, let's say he wants immigration to stop. So you have that one guy, and then you have another person who celebrates Columbus, and then you have another person which goes around killing people, right? All three of those are white supremacy, right? This is about creating moral equivalence. That's my opinion. But let's look back at what some of these people are telling us about whiteness and white supremacy and critical race theory. Did you see this article in the New York Times? This one was written by Nell Irvin Painter. So she is president of the Southern Historical Association, former president of the Organization of American Historians, a very important lady. And in her article for the New York Times, she told us about whiteness. The article is called a racist attack shows how whiteness evolves. In this article, she mentions there are two 17-year-old boys harassing four black girls, middle school girls, at a high school football game. Apparently, one of the boys even urinated on one of the girls, which is awful. That's crazy. Although there is a problem, the boys weren't even white. The police said they were Indian. Indian. Miss Painter goes on to explain how the boys, quote, show how race is something you perform, end quote. She's saying by harassing those young girls, they were performing being white. So even though there was no white people involved, this is still a white-on-black attack. In this case, she's saying that whiteness of these boys isn't because they have ancestors in Europe. It's because they desire to be mean to black people, so they're white. <laughs> I mean, this woman obviously really hates us, and she hates us a lot. She, she can say that race is something you can perform, but when you look at what all these colleges are saying, hey, let's look at Texas State University at their paper. Your DNA is an abomination, white people. They say you have white privilege for being born white. So this is ultimately, while they can occasionally say something like, oh, it's not about who you are, it's about actions. People perform being white. Uh, at the end of the day, if your ancestors come from Europe, they're talking about you. We know that she's lying when she says that race is something that's only performed because she would also tell us that you were born with it. And you weren't performing anything back then, back when you were born. She wants to be able to place the blame on white people for actions that not even we are doing. It's white people's fault when those Indians beat up on little black girls. But she's not the only one who hates us. You remember the Smithsonian? The ones who say that science and objectivity is whiteness? The Smithsonian also does art. They put up the portraits of this guy, Kehinde Wiley. Now, he creates portraits of black people, including portraits like this. This one here is actually a painting he got, he made from a mugshot of a black criminal. And he also does ones like this. Black people holding the severed heads of murdered white people, mostly murdered white women. In an interview with New York Magazine, they asked him about one of his paintings of a black person holding a white woman's severed head, and he said, quote, It's sort of a play on the kill whitey thing, end quote. And if his art looks familiar, it should. He made an official portrait of Barack Obama. You can see his painting of Barack Obama at the National Portrait Gallery. For that presidential portrait, 
Uh, He decided not to include the severed heads of murdered white women. Kind of boring, but I could see why he might want to avoid it for a presidential portrait. So let's get back to white supremacy. Did you see that Black Lives Matter protest where they were causing problems outside of a homeowner's house, a white person? He told the mob outside of his house to be peaceful, not to destroy things. He was quickly shouted down, told by the crowd, F you, no one wants your white opinion. And he was, someone also shouted to him that a white person telling black people to be peaceful is white supremacy. So if you think blacks should be nonviolent or want to tell them how to protest, that's you being a white supremacist. Also, if you were to expect the people to show up time for an interview, that would be white supremacy. Remember what we learned about a sense of urgency and rigid time schedules? Killer of white supremacy. We were taught this in college. If you want to celebrate the founding fathers, if you want to celebrate your ancestors who came over from wherever, anywhere in Europe, well, that would be you being a white supremacist. And these are all morally the same as someone who goes out and murders, right? Because you'd all just be white supremacists, right? Now, we haven't even mentioned how the vast majority of interracial murder in the United States is blacks and Hispanics targeting white people, not the other way around. Blacks are around 27 times more likely to attack a white person than a white person attacking a black. There is a lot of racial violence in the United States, and it's mostly white people who are the victims. But the point I really want to get at here is no matter how crazy this line of thinking is, you know, when they're talking about white supremacy and whiteness and dismantling the nuclear family, as crazy as that sounds, it's in the college campuses, it's in the media, it's in the streets being screamed at this guy, and it's in, or at least was in, the government, right? Trump ordered it to be removed, Biden wants to bring it back. It's in our elections, too. How about Raphael Warnock in the Georgia special election? He's running for the Senate seat as a Democrat. He's been endorsed by Barack Obama, Cory Booker, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and even Jimmy Carter at 96 years old, still handing out endorsements. He got one. America needs to repent for its worship of whiteness. So maybe this is something to keep in mind. The next time you read a Wikipedia article or you see a news segment and they say that a person is a white supremacist, you might think, like, are they really? I mean, have they killed someone? Are they arguing for genocide? They're probably just a white person who is not ashamed of the fact they were born white. They argue against white privilege. They might argue against mass immigration, replacing whites in our own countries. They might argue against specific oppression narratives. They might reject the idea that white people ruined the world. So Wikipedia telling you that Lana Lochteff and Nick Fuentes are white supremacists? No, it's not true. Organizations like the ADL telling you that Michelle Malkin is working to normalize white supremacy? No, that's not true. But we still need to take this seriously, even though it is goofy. Organizations like the SPLC and the ADL have massive sway in the United States. They're able to put pressure on websites like YouTube to get people banned for supposedly being a white supremacist. They can get in front of Congress. They give their opinions to our lawmakers. So while the academic definition of white supremacy, while critical race theory, while this is all goofy... It is pervasive, it is everywhere, and it probably includes you if you think people should have to show up for interviews or if you think that hard work is kind of a good thing, even if you're not white. If you just like white people and want us to maintain our countries, well, they'll call you one too. If you talk about crime statistics, well, gosh, they might just come right after you. Even if you were to only focus on facts and information, for example, if someone told you a narrative, a story about how police kill lots of black people, for example, and you were to give them statistics, if you were to tell them, hey, that for every 10,000 arrests of a black person for a violent crime, there's about three deaths, 
And for every 10,000 arrests of a white person for a violent crime, there's four deaths. You tell them that, you could give them facts, information, statistics, you still might be get labeled a white supremacist and silenced. After all, just saying that might mean that you're running afoul of not believing experiences of POC, people of color, or casting doubt on narratives of police brutality or police murdering POC, which is, again, covert white supremacy. We know that from our college courses. So the next time you hear someone called a white supremacist, you might not want to take it seriously, especially if it comes from a college that publishes that our white people's DNA is an abomination, or who hires staff who says that white people need to die. And white people may have to die. You stick with that. I'm confused on why that's so controversial. White people are roughly 10% of the world's population, a small minority, and we're getting smaller, smaller and smaller and smaller each year. White people are disproportionately attacked and victimized in our statistics on interracial crime. There are people publicly calling for the deaths of white people and wishing for genocide of white people, and yet the conversation is all about who is the worst of the worst, which is a white supremacist. That's what they're actually telling us. And you might be surprised to learn at how long these things have actually been around. They've been wending their way through college campuses for decades now. If you want to see what modern scholarship looks like, here's actually a paper from five years ago. It's about the white dominance of Curious George, the, the child's book series that helps kids learn to read. And this isn't the first time Curious George has come up, although this is an essay prize winner. <laughs> uh, they've been writing about the white domination, white supremacy, and racial aspects of Curious George for over a decade. And now the news media is full of journalism majors who have learned in college all about white dominance, white supremacy, whiteness, critical race theory. Some of these people who learned all about critical race theory graduated 20 years ago, 15 years ago, or even just 10 years ago. You might not realize how much this has taken over academia. So don't say, oh, it's goofy, but it's too goofy to stay. No one will ever take it seriously. It already has stayed, and it's getting stronger and stronger and stronger, especially if Biden or anyone else is able to put it back in our government or is able to put it in European governments, which it already is. This is threatening to destroy everything. So there you go. Now you know a little bit about critical race theory, a bit about the terms they use, whiteness, white supremacy, uh, it is very odd. It's a very artificially constructed way of thinking, and it's a way of thinking that specifically targets white people for hatred and criticism. It's pushed by people who are anti-white. There's another term for you. Anti-whites are just people who hate whites. Whether they want to genocide us or not, who cares? They hate white people. They hate the countries that were built by white people, like the United States, Canada, Australia, all of Europe. They might yell free Tibet to stop the ethnic replacement of Tibetans, but they'll cheer for the ethnic replacement of white people in our countries. 